Hello, my name is David McLaughlin. I'm from Just Yoga in Fremantle, and today I'll be teaching you a sequence in Iinga Yoga. In Iinga Yoga, we use a number of props, and you can substitute the blankets, blocks, belts, bolsters, and chairs with other pieces of equipment you might have around the house. The sequence will go for 30 minutes. If you wanted to make the sequence longer, you just pause the tape and extend the pose, the hold of the pose, for longer. We'll start off with Swastikasana, lying down, easy cross legs. i use a couple of props here, blankets. Sitting down in front of the blankets, making sure that there's enough room behind the sacrum, about a fist distance so the sacrum rolls under. Fold the legs, easy cross leg. Then hands beside the hips, inhale, lift the spine. Coming back, lying down a long length of the bolster so the spine is fully supported. And just rest there, allow the body to soften. If you find that your knees are particularly high, you can support them with blocks. So to start with, we just let the body soften and bring our mind into our practice. After a couple of minutes, you take the blocks away, hands beside the hips, inhale, exhale, coming up. We'll move now to Adamuka Sarasana. Once again, you may need to use props. Coming down, kneeling on your mat, have the knees to the outside edges of the mat, big toes together, draw the calves back from behind the thighs, sitting down the heels. Inhale, lift up the spine, and then as you exhale, folding from the hips, walk the hands out, drawing the spine out to the centre of the room. We're looking to try and keep the neck and the spine in one line here. So take the forehead down to the floor. Should you be tight and you find that your spine or your chest doesn't come down and you're kinking the neck, get another prop again. Blanket's a good one. Then just rest the forehead on the blanket. Press the hands down firmly, spreading the fingers. And start to squeeze the upper arms in towards each other so that the elbows aren't bent. As you inhale, lift the crown of the head, forehead, draw them out, lengthening the spine out to the center of the room. As you exhale, softening the groins and the quadriceps. Pressing the crease of the hip back, drawing the sitting bones back and down towards the heels. So you're lengthening the spine in two directions. So at the beginning of the practice, we're just trying to slowly, gently warm up the body rather than going full bolt straight into the practice, potentially giving ourselves an injury. Once again, after a minute or two, walking the hands back as you inhale, coming up, putting the props neatly to the side. The next posture we'll be doing now is Adamukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Bring the knees in so that they're underneath the hips, hip width, hands underneath the shoulders, shoulder width. Once again, spread the fingers. So don't let the fingers be closed, spread them out. Press the palms down, inhale and then exhale. Lift the buttocks up, extend through the spine. See that the arms and the spine are in one line, lifting the buttock bones high towards the ceiling. To start with, have the knees bent, lift the buttock bones high. Then, so start to lengthen, press the inner thighs back, lengthen through the back of the thighs, back of the legs. But keep the sitting bones high, try to resist the sitting bones coming down. Extend once again the crown of the head, the neck, the upper spine towards the hands as you did before in the previous pose. Keep the length in the spine. Inhale, exhale, keep the legs straight, press the heels down, drawing the calves away from the back of the knees. Keeping the sitting bones lifted high as much as possible. So the legs lengthen in two directions. Heels drawing the calves away from the back of the knees. Sitting bones lifting, drawing the hamstrings away from the back of the knees. It's not essential that the heels come to the floor. But those of you who are a little bit tighter, the sitting bones start to drop. Place some heel blocks underneath the heels or some other height 
You can use the wall, have your heels up the wall. Lift again. And this will help you keep action into the back of the legs rather than compromising the spine. Softening your breath, breathing through the nose. Keep the front of the hips lifted high, draw the quadricep high up into the crease of the hip, keeping the leg active. Bend, bending the knees, walk the hands back. We'll come into Uttanasana. Take the feet to the outside edges of the mat. Have the hands on the floor, knees bent. Draw the navel and sternum forward, so lengthen through the front of the spine. Pressing the legs back, hands down. Folding from the crease of the hip, fold the arms above the head. Now, if you're particularly tight, what you can do is take a chair, any kind of chair, maybe even the kitchen bench at home. Stand with the feet once again to the outside edges of the mat, and then fold the arms above the head like this and rest. Keep the spine long, keep the quadriceps lifted. Those of you who are tight will feel quite a bit of action through the back of the leg. Draw the navel and sternum out, lengthen through the front of the body. Then step in towards the chair coming up. Put the chair out of the way again, then coming back to downward facing dog once more. Remember, hands shoulder width apart, fingers spread wide. Lift the buttock bones high, extend through the spine. Press the legs back. Draw the outer edge of the heels down, lengthening through the back of the legs. Start to lengthen as much through the front of the spine as you do through the back of the spine. So inhale, draw the navel and sternum out towards the hands. Keep the sitting bones lifted high. Press the inner thighs back. Press the outer heels down. Bend the knees again, lift the buttock bones high. Lift the heels and press the thighs back. Send the heels. Then once again, bend the knees, walk the hands back towards the feet and come into Uttanasana. Keep the legs straight, quadriceps lifted. Lift right up into the crease of the hip. Soften the crease of the hip, inhale, draw the elbows, the crown head to the floor. As you exhale, fold the torso in towards the thighs. Keep the hips over the ankles. Then with the kneecaps lifted, inhale. Swing the arms, torso up. Exhale, release. It's important to remember that yoga can be quite strong and powerful. So make sure you don't overextend yourself too far. If you feel any pain beyond that of burning from stretching, it's best just to tone it back a little bit, work within your abilities. You need to work at the edge, not far beyond your abilities to receive a real benefit from the practice. Starting now, we'll go to Trikonasana. We always start off in Tadasana, mountain pose. So lift the quadriceps. Feet together, lift the quadriceps, lift the front hips up. Exhale, draw the corners of the shoulders back and extend the arms to the floor. Then trikonasana, inhale, arms across the chest. Jump, step the legs apart. Turn the right foot in, turn the whole of the left leg out. See the front foot heel is intersecting the arch of the back foot. Quadriceps are lifted and the inner thighs are turned out away from each other. Lift the front of the hips up. Now whilst I turn to the camera, you need to make sure you're facing forward. So inhale now, exhale, extend out towards the left, then take the left hand down to the shin. It's not important that you touch the ankle or whether you touch the top of the shin. It's essential that you draw yourself out and then just bring the hand down. So if that's as far as you come, that's fine. Lift the quadricep, keep the quadricep lifted high. Top arm directly over the lower arm. Inhale, exhale, look up towards the top arm. The trick around is a standing pose, so see that the legs are working. Press the inner heel down. Lift the inner thigh, the thigh of the 
Left leg and draw the inner thigh out. Then inhale, coming up. Turn, feet to the front. And then turn, left foot in, right foot out. Inhale, exhale, extend out to the right. Take the right hand down to the shin. Top arm up towards the ceiling. Once again, press the inner heel down. Lift the quadricep with the front leg. But also remember to press the outside edge of the back foot down. Don't let the outside edge lift up. Press it down. Turn the inner thigh of the back leg out. Bring the back hip back towards the wall behind you. Top arm directly over the lower arm. Turn your head looking up towards the top arm. Then turn your head to the front. Inhale. Coming up. Jump. Step the legs back together. Back to Tadasana. Inhale. Arms across the chest, jump the legs apart for Vibhadrasana, two. So it's just a little bit longer in the distance in the feet than it is for Trikonasana. Once again, turn the right foot in, turn the whole of the left leg out. See the front foot heels intersecting the arch of the back foot. Lift up the spine, turn both thighs out. See that the foot, the shin, the knee, the thigh are all facing out towards the left. And then inhale, lift the spine, exhale, bend the left knee, the left hip. Now see that the knee is over the ankle, so if the knee's too far forward, walk the back foot back. Draw forward on the inner thigh and back on the outer thigh and draw the leg back into the hip socket. See that the knee is directly out over the ankle. Lift the spine, bring the right ribs back towards the wall behind you. The left ribs forward and then inhale. Now exhale, turn the head looking out over the front arm. Hands should be at shoulder height. And then turn the head to the front of the room, inhale, coming up. Turn the left foot in, right foot out. And then turn the left foot in again. Turn the whole of the right leg out, preparing for the other side. Inhale, exhale. Bend the right knee, the right hip. See that the knee is directly out over the ankle. Draw forward on the inner thigh. Back on the outer thigh and then Looking out over the right hand. See that the back leg remains active. So once again, don't let the outside edge of the foot lift. Press it down, lift the inner thigh. Bring the left hip back towards the wall behind you. Reach back of the torso so that the torso is above the thighs, or above the hips, rather than reaching out to there. Then turn your head back to the center. Inhale, straighten the legs. Turn the feet to the front, jump. Step the legs back together. Once again, into Dasana. Heels, big toes together. Lift the quadriceps. Take a pause here, so just standing still. Lift the front hips up. Lift the front of the spine up. Corners of the shoulders back. Draw the arms down. Inhale, arms across the chest. Parsva Kanasana. Jump the legs as far apart as you did before for Vibhadrasana too. Right foot in, left foot out. Hold the right, left leg's turning out. Inhale, exhale. Come to Vibhadrasana 2 first. And then inhale, raise the left arm up. Press into the crease of the hip here and extend out as you did in Trikonasana. And take your hand down to the block. Have the wrist against the ankle. The elbow against the knee. Adjust with the back foot to see that the knee is directly over the ankle. Take your hand onto your hip. And draw the elbow and the shoulder of the right back and open up the chest. Turn, looking up towards the top arm. Take the top arm up. Turn the top arm in the shoulder socket so the palm is facing out to the left. Inhale, exhale. Take the arm over. Looking up underneath the armpit. Soften your breath. It's quite strong in this posture. So bring some calmness to the body. Once again, making sure you're pressing the outside edge of the back foot down and that the back leg is active. And turn the top palm, palm towards the ceiling, bring the arm up. Back to Vibhadrasana 2. Then straighten the front leg. To the front. Make sure you clear the mat of props so you don't trip over them again. Then left foot in, right foot out. Just the distance. Inhale, exhale. out again to the right side. Hand onto the block. 
Top arm up towards the ceiling. Turn the top arm in the shoulder socket. Inhale, exhale, bring the arm over, looking up underneath the armpit. Keep the knee pressed against the elbow and see that the butt doesn't stick out. Draw the back, backside in. Turn the inner thigh of the back leg out. Bring the back hip back towards the wall behind you. Turn the palm towards the ceiling. Inhale, bring the arm up. Back to Vibra Justin too. And then standing up. Turn the feet to the front. Jump. Step the legs back together. Once again, making sure you don't trip over your props. Move them out to the side. And then to finish off now, once again we'll come to Uttanasana. So take the feet to the outside edges of the mat. See that the inner arches are parallel rather than the outer arches. That would mean the feet would turn in. So turn the feet slightly out, turn the palms out. Inhale, raise the arms up. Little finger into the crook of each elbow. Once again, if you need to, use the chair. Inhale, quadriceps lifted. Exhale, folding in from the hip. Keep the quadriceps lifted. Extend the arms, crown the head to the floor. Have the hips over the ankles. And resting there. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so lift the quadriceps. See the quadriceps are lifted high up into the crease of the hip. Then inhale, raise the arms and the torso. Exhale, release the arms. Okay, we're gonna go into seated Varasana now. So you may need some height. You may need either a folded blanket, two folded blankets, or something like this, the bolster. So have the knees together, feet on the outside edges of the hips. Draw the calves back, sit down on the bolster. Take the hands so that the heels of the hands are towards the, or heels of the palms are towards the heels of the feet, fingers towards the toes. Then lift the spine. So as you press down the inner thighs, press down the crease of the hips, lift the spine up. Bring the corners of the shoulders back, shoulder blades down the spine. Press the thighs down, lift the torso. If you're tight in the legs, you may need even a little bit more height. But as the legs start to lengthen across the front of the quadriceps, you'll find it a little easier to sit there. You can use support, another blanket underneath the shins and the feet, if you find that floor is a little bit hard. Then, releasing the arms, interlock the fingers like so. Turn the palms away from you, keeping the shoulders down away from the ears, press the palms away. So Paravatasana hands or arms in Varasana. So inhale, lift the spine, press the thighs down, now raise the arms up. Keep the elbows straight, draw the shoulders back away from the ears. Now if you're particularly tight in the shoulders, your ears or shoulders will lift up towards the ears. You want to draw them down. You may not be able to keep the elbows straight either. So if you're tight, press the palms away. Keep raising the arms up until you find you start to lose the posture. Then press the arms away, or the palms away. Suck the arms into the shoulder sockets. Draw the shoulder blades down. Keep extending and slowly as the arms and the shoulders lengthen, raise the arms up. Keep the lower ribs from pressing out. Draw them back in towards the spine. And then inhale, exhale, release the arms. Have a look at the fingers. Which fingers on top? Change the cross of the fingers so the other fingers on top, shoulders down. Turn the palms away once again. Press palms away. Now see that the little finger and the index finger are pressing away evenly. Suck the arms back into the shoulder sockets, then once again, inhale, raise the arms up. Press the thighs down, lift the spine, raise the arms up. Keep the shoulders drawn back and down. Keep the elbows straight. Breath should be soft, breathing through the nose. Avoid breathing through the mouth. You start to lose your body's moisture. Throat becomes dry. Inhale, exhale, 
release the arms. We're going to do a twist now in Varasana. So once again, take your hands back to the feet. Straighten the arms, lift the spine. And then inhale, release the arms. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale now, turn to the right. Take the, sorry, the left. Take the left hand down on the bolster. Blanket behind you. Take the back of the right hand to the outside edge of the left knee. Inhale, lift the spine. And then exhale. Turn the head looking out over the left shoulder. Now see that you don't lift up with the back hip or the right hip. Keep pressing down evenly through the right thigh. Inhale, lift the spine. Exhale, rotate. Now it's not important that you be able to turn, twist yourself into a pretzel. You have to work within your abilities. Keep that in mind. Breath is inhale, lifting the spine. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, lift the spine. Exhale, rotate. Keep the shoulders away from the ears at all times. Then inhale, turn back towards the front. Exhale, release. Hands down beside the hips again. Inhale, raise the arms. Turn to the other side. Take the right hand on the bolster now. Take the outside edge of the left hand. Onto the back of the knee. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, rotate. Think of the spine as a chain. Each vertebra is a link in that chain. If you take a chain and slack and you twist it, it knots on one or two vertebrae. So inhale, lift the spine, make that chain, the spine, taut. Then inhale, exhale, rotate. With a taut chain, if you twist it, twist is spread evenly along all the links of the chain. In this case, all the vertebrae of the spine. There's less likelihood of injury. Inhale, lift, exhale, rotate. Remember, as you twist, body slowly opens. So don't try and bring the full twist straight away. Gently rotate, twist. Inhale and exhale, release. Come to the front. Good. We come now to Dandasana to start with. Use a prop which appropriately suits your body. And by that I mean when you sit with the legs out in front like this now, as I sit on the blanket here, see that you can lift the spine up fully. If the spine is still rounded, then you need a higher prop. This makes it easier for you to sit upright so you're not crunching the abdominals. You get the lift that you need through the front of the body. Hands on the bolster there, press the hands down, lift up. Turn the palms out to the side, keep the legs pressing down, Raise the arms up. By using the legs, the lower back is supported. If you let go of the legs, you send to slouch. So press the thighs down, lift the spine up. Turn the palms out to the side, bring the hands down. Using a belt now, we're going to Koshimottanasana. So hands beside the hips, inhale, raise the spine up. Exhale, come forward, take the belt around the outside edge of the feet. Draw back and about and lift the spine. So the back of the leg is now starting to work. The objective is not that you bring your head to your knees. Get the spine lengthening and lift. Create space and bring the space to the posture. Press the thighs down. Inhale, lift the spine. Then as you exhale, bend the elbows out to the side, drawing the spine forward. If you can, comfortably, take your hands further down the belt. Holding onto the feet is in the central. Inhale, lift, pose, and then repose. Drawing forward. At all times, try to avoid arching the spine like that. Shortens through the front of the torso, and that's not our objective. Press down to the crease of the hip again. Lift up, lengthen. As long as the back of the legs are working, and the spine's protected, you can safely perform this posture. Lift up, inhale, exhale. Drawing forward with the sternum, the navel, out to the toes. Then inhale, straighten the legs, draw back on the belt, and then release the belt. So we're going to go now to Triangle Mukha Ekapada Poshimottanasana. So, if you want a bolster before, just turn the bolster like so, and then with the right buttock on the bolster, right leg straight, fold the left leg 
back into Varasana. See that the foot, and I'll change sides so you can see. See that the foot, as before, is on the outside of the hip so that the hip can descend. You need to have enough height that you can keep the bent leg down onto the floor. Okay? So we'll do this side first. Hands beside the hips. Press the inner thighs down, lift the spine. See how my spine is long and straight? Taking the belt. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, come forward. Take the belt around the outside edge of the feet. Inhale, draw back on the belt, lift the spine. Shoulders back and down. Spine is lifted. Inhale, keeping the weight pressing down here evenly through both thighs. Exhale, drawing forward, lengthening the torso out. Keep pressing the inner thigh of the straight leg down, quadricep lifted. Once again, straighten the arms, lift up. Exhale, coming forward. If you can, you can take the outside edge of the foot, but it's not essential. And then inhale, straighten the arms. Because this is a two-sided posture, you can't spend as long in it. Come to the other side. Once again, outside of the foot, so on the outside edge of the hip, so the space for the hip to descend. See that the buttock only is on the bolster, not the thigh as well. So just the buttock. Hands down beside the hips now. Press the big toe ball of the foot away. Inner thighs both pressing down. Thighs should be parallel. Hands beside the hips. Inhale, lift the spine. Raise the arms up. Exhale, coming forward. Take the belt around the outside edge of the feet. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, coming forward. Draw the elbows out to the side. Shoulders back and down. Straighten the arms again. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back and down. So the sitting bone needs to be drawing back. So the back of the leg is lengthening. Draw the navel and the sternum out towards the toes rather than the forehead down to the knee. Lengthen out. And then, you know, straighten the arms. Going back up. Now, as I said before, this practice is designed for 30 minutes. But if you want to make it longer, just hold the postures for a minute or two longer or repeat the postures. At the end of the class, it's important that we calm down, we calm our system down. So the last two postures now are going to work at doing that. We'll use a chair for Fabrita Carini, so the legs will be rested on the back of the chair there. You can use a blanket to soften the chair or to adjust the height if you're tall. And you put a bolster just on the side here, or rest our sacrum on. Take the outside edge of your hip, put it on the edge of the bolster there. Then lying down, rolling onto your side, place your legs with the calves on the chair like that. Take the arms down, so the shoulders, blades draw down the spine, palms towards the ceiling. There's no need to flex the fingers, no need to grip them, just let them naturally curl so that you're in a relaxed state. So be there for a minute or two, or as long as you like. It's quite restful, you've worked strongly. See that the bolster's supporting the whole of the sacrum. It's not too far up the back. When you're ready to come out, bend the knees, roll over to your side. The last posture is Shavasana. So lay a blanket out, like so. See the blanket is even. You want to be even on the blanket. You don't want to be feeling as if there's that princess in the pea situation where you can't relax because there's a fold pressing you back. See that when you lie down, your whole of your torso is going to be on the whole of the blanket. So you're not going to be half on and half off. So sit at the end of the blanket here, 
with the knees bent, hands beside the hips, inhale, lift the spine, and then exhale, walk the hands back, lengthen the spine out, vertebra by vertebra. So the spine is fully lengthened out along the blanket. Take the shoulder blades down the spine, each side, then adjust the blanket. Have the folded edge towards the shoulders, so the, bring the blanket in so the whole of the neck from the head to the shoulders is supported. Then once again, no props in your way. Arms out to the side, 45 degree angle to the body. And now straighten the legs. With the eyes closed, the gaze of the eyes turned towards the heart. Draw your awareness towards your breath. Slowly scanning through the body, allowing the body to relax, muscles to soften, tension to release. Once you've scanned through the body, allow the body to become relaxed, you might feel heavy. Bring awareness to your mind and allow your mind to release. But whilst the body becomes heavy, allow the mind to become light. Let it float, free of any thoughts or images. I'd recommend staying in Shavasana for at least 10 minutes. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the class.